it's me again the buyer and we are back on track with our luxury campaign let's play currently testing the f1 prototype we want to enter into yeah formula one obviously please ignore the wobbling bits in the rear of the car i have no idea what's going on there maybe the mod body i'm using is a little bit screwed up um, i tried to reinforce it with additional struts and stuff but still it always wobbles we try to get back into motorsports with this 1.5 liter turbo v6 the car itself is driving all right it's a bit on the understeery side i tried to fix that with changing a bit in suspension and aero but with little success but else it's actually you yeah, are somewhat drivable just this whole wobbling part in the rear is really a problem because somehow the aero simulation of beam messes around with that and once you go over 260 kilometers an hour things really break and you will then get asymmetrical drag and the car becomes uncontrollable so that's why i stick to below 260 kilometers an hour there to just try to stay on track so what's our plan for the future? F1 project is going, but we're probably still a bit down on power compared to our competition. So we will do updates to, to the engine, as long as Formula 1 allows to have turbo engines. And in addition to that, we will bring a new Godwit, and I have something special in mind for that. So the old Godwit was a huge car with 8.5 liter V12. But I think the future points into a little bit of a different direction with regards to technology in general. And we want to show that we are capable of handling most recent technology. So let's bring Turbo also into serious production. That's definitely something that will happen for the new Godwit. In the meantime, the F1 prototype has done a sub 150. It did 150 in the automation track simulation. So at least we're better than that driving it ourselves. I think then that's good for now for our first test and let's head into the office. All right, we're back in the office and the situation is not looking so good on paper. We're losing quite a bit of money, but that's mostly due to factory construction for the Claris 2. And uh, we have a lot of engineering going on. Of course, the F1 car, the Bramble, and the Godwit also with a first facelift, long overdue fa facelift, I must say, because it will already get a replacement um, within this episode. Um, the old Claris is still being manufactured but will be replaced anytime soon in one and a half years by the new one. So the economy is looking good, finances should be looking better as soon as we get through all of this stuff and as soon as we get our facelifts out because currently also our facelifts are already eating into our profits because we are having a lot of pre-orders. So I'd like to start with the next generation Godwit right now, but I had an idea and that is we could reuse our F1 efforts to place the 1.5 liter V6 in the Godwit. So it's not really a muscle car, but more like a technology demonstrator. What you can achieve with small engines and a turbo that you still can have very sporty and fast car. And it would then rather be going into the super and hypercar market which basically a supercar market has just started um, hypercar is not there yet but yeah supercar convertible supercar are becoming more and more relevant and we could go into there instead of muscle premium muscle premium also is somewhat covered by the bramble and you could say by the clearest a bit as well even though with the automatic suspension and squishy suspension um, it's not as sporty but in general it should help with the margins they almost have double um, double the budget than muscle premium so let's try to get into convertible super and super but the downside is i cannot do that right now because i have to wait for the f1 engine to be finished because i don't want to place the current f1 engine which is very prototypical and very explosive um, into a series production model so I will wait until the end of 1981 and then detune it and make it more feasible and more drivable for the serious production use case. Maybe we can also do a facelift of the Windley at some point, but probably when all of my other stuff is finished because I don't want to have so many pre-orders and no profits anymore. All right. 
there we are. F1 car is ready, so we're entering F1 in 1982. Um, but we immediately need to work on a successor. So Godwit, F1, and then wait until Claris 2 and Bramble 2 are done, and then we'll get into uh, the Windley facelift as well. Let's get started, and I would say um, we'll start with the F1 car and with the engine. So an engine update for the F1 and an engine downgrade for the series production. I aim for two years of update time, so it's the 1984 F1 version then. And let's see how much more power we can get out of the engine for the next season. So we'll definitely not hit above 1000 horsepower, which is basically what they had in qualifying trim. I'm more aiming at the end of its lifespan, maybe at 800-900 horsepower and at a substantial upgrade for this one, while still somewhat maintaining a usable ref range. We could get up to 1000 horsepower and just have 500 rpm of usable power band, but that's not what makes sense. So mostly I try to achieve it with a bigger turbo and more boost. The boost control does add a bit of usable RPM range, but I'm not sure if we can afford that engineering wise. Let's see. Yeah, I would go for something like this, 675 horsepower. And I will leave the engine pretty much untouched, I guess. Yeah, just go for a fully clad under tray to get some experience there as well. ABS is not something I want in my Formula 1 car. Yeah, the rest is fine. The car is also good engineering time-wise and we can learn a bit we could even learn a bit more so i want to get to two years and maybe i just invest a bit more in aerodynamics quality and gain familiarity there so i cannot make this project last any longer um, i could update tooling and process but it's not relevant as we're not manufacturing this basically prototype car so why not spend it on something useful? Below 700 kilos again. Oh, and now we're too long. Yeah, aero quality is contributing the most. Yeah, 5 million for this update is decent. Let's see if we can afford the engine. Oh yeah, easily. In theory I could invest a lot more, but maybe let's first check if this is still the case when I add a new trim here. So our production model. I will aim for around 450 horsepower, let's say 400, because the supercars of the time had, I think the F40, around 480 in this region, so definitely not above 500. And we want to have it drivable, so smaller turbo gap here let's see what we can do the question is can we reduce the turbo lag with two turbos i will try that quickly uh, i think it's pretty hard to tune let's let's start properly unleaded fuel so i think most supercars are in fuinia let's check that again yeah, 100 of my 170 are in Ruinia, so I will just go for 91 runs so far. Typically in reality you would rather go for 95 or something, even more, but I want to sell it in Ruinia. Now let's go away from race parts, except for maybe the headers. I think race headers still make sense, should also look nice. Yeah, definitely want to keep those. Definitely still have a loudness problem and also no catalytic converter. 1.5 bar is plenty, I guess. I 
go down a bit in quality as well, especially for the top end, to make it more viable and our margins better. Still is not looking too good. If we want to make some power, yeah, I don't like the curve so far. So with two turbos I get it to spool at around 5000, with one turbo. Pretty much the same. So I probably stick to the one turbo to make it not so much different from the F1 engine. I think this is as good as it gets, 370 horsepower only. Yeah, the race intake would do a lot, but I don't want to do that on a, on a series production car. I think this is looking good, 350 horsepower, still plenty if we can keep it somewhat light. Okay, we're still doing good engineering time-wise, but because there is now a series production engine in there, I want to increase a few of those sliders. Let's get it to two years, like the car. Oh, the reliability slider would be more important than tooling and process. Racing contract for the race engine, doesn't really matter, and some other contract, I think I can reuse the, this old one, or I might even need my own factory, the Godwin, what does it use, I think it's the 8.5 right, it's definitely from 68, Again, quite expensive with four trucks now. Factory for the F1 car doesn't matter. And I will not yet sign off, I will first go into designing the Godwit. And yes, one of my favorite bodies is available. I probably could get away with something smaller, but we are still Might Motors, so. Chassis is a pretty standard Might Motors setup, I would say. I think in this case I could even go for a bit of quality, maybe two out of three. And then let's choose our new engine, 350 horsepower. Look at it slip diff. Tires are definitely too large. Maybe I also make them bigger in the rear. But before I finish the car, let's first design.
All right, there we have it. Exhaust is not connected. Let me fix that. Okay, wiggling with the engine sliders has helped. I think this is looking good and let's continue. Yeah, this is again a question. I think for this very sporty application, let's not use power steering. And because it's a technology demonstrator, we might use this as a chance to gain some familiarity with ABS. It will be easier to do it here in a smaller scale production model than in one of our large scale models. And maybe even we go for all out suspension stuff. This is high budget. You can use any chance to gain familiarity for one of these more advanced parts. Roll angle is non-existent. So let's reduce the sway bars. There it is certainly quite quick already, but we can invest a bit in the arrow and also reduce our angles here. Yeah, at least make it go above 300 kilometers an hour. That's good. Comfort is not that important, so I would rather go for sport here but because we remind motors, we are only allowed to go for luxury or handmade. And we want to prestige, so let's go for hand handmade. Let's check on the power steering. Yeah, definitely no power steering here. Seven points of sportiness. Safety wise. Yeah, let's go for the advanced 80s. We already have some familiarity, it should be fine. Or we have the, also we also have the ABS here, so I not go for advanced 80s, but rather for advanced 70s, because we will spend the engineering time on ABS. We can make it a bit lighter. Weight distribution is already at the rear, because the engine is so light. So let's balance it out a bit more. Still a bit rear heavy, but it's okay. So on the spring side we could make it a bit more sporty but I think we are already pretty well done and we cover a lot of the important markets. So that's our new muscle slash supercar. Muscle car with 1.5 liter engine and now let's add a convertible trim and then we are done. I could even uh, think about adding a more entry level sports car trim but I will check that when I see how much of my factory I am already using. Automatic soft top. Convertible super is the target category. And it is really, really heavy. Oh god. Brakes are definitely at their limit. Yeah, I, I don't think 400 kilos more for just for a convertible is realistic, but that's how it is. Stats wise, 5.3 seconds, 0 to 100. Main contributor chassis, so maybe I get rid of some quality here. Aerodynamics can also reduce that a bit. And then we should be pretty good. Driver assists. Zero engineering time. I thought I had ABS. It didn't do too much. Uh, it's just too much in every area. So let's try to get this working in a reasonable amount of time. Reasonable, you could say five years is already reasonable. I might just go with this. Yeah, I think I will just stick with this and make it a bit cheaper. Five years, that's good. 
So then, factory. Oh no, the Godwit factory is still being tooled because of the facelift that's currently going on. And that's another year, but I definitely don't want to wait another year. Do I need a new one for this now or? So what's also going on is that the Claris will move into this medium factory. So maybe I can use the small factory from the old Claris. Yeah, that's only in six mo uh, seven months. So we can certainly use the old Claris factory. I could also rename my engine project at some point. It's no longer secret, I guess. Engine load is fine. And this is a very manual project, so automation slider needs to be down. Yeah, I see there's definitely room for an entry-level model, because we're currently around 1.5 shifts with these prices, and these prices are not what I want to have. But if I also want to get into the muscle premium, I need to lower it. Yeah, I think I'll just go with the lower prices and um, don't have a supercar priced model. So for the supercar convertible, definitely makes sense to just raise the price. The convertible sport is so far away, we can definitely stay in the high range there. And then this will also cater to the overall supercar. Let's go with something like that. One shift is all right. And now, very important, we cannot sign off everything together because then our F1 engine will come out in five years and we want to have our F1 car in 1984, not in 1987. So first off, we sign off F1 car and the engine projects. Both will last 24 months. Do we need a loan? That's a very good question, because we currently pay a lot of factory upgrades. I will play it safe. Same as for the Godwit, which now can use the side of engine. 80%, 60 months. Decent loan interest rate. And let's sign this one off. And then we have this one in the line. Very good. So let's see, in one year we have many many new projects being released and finished and once they are done I will work on an update for the Windley and then we can play until 1984 for this episode. Economy is tanking again. And I hope my money lasts until the new projects are being released and I think the pre-orders will kick in very soon. We also need to upgrade our marketing and research once we're back in the green. Okay, Claris, please help. We will be there soon. Okay, pre-orders kicking in now. Claris has helped already a bit. The old one is still being produced, it looks like. So let's pause the production and pre-orders here. Yeah, and then this factory will be taken over by the Godwit anyway, at some point. Oh, still losing big money. Two months to go, maybe we can hold out with our cash. Yeah, for, I could sell the Claris for scrap, but it's only 3 million of cash, so I won't do that. Luckily, something kicked in and we have got a bit of money but let's see we already have two nice messages here got rid factory costs a bit more that's all right and the bramble as well god damn it 55 million i will not pay that from cash i will have to refinance that and pay 3.5 more so what would be really nice is to actually see how much cash you have on the screen now it's all blurred out and Luckily, I know that I have around 50, 60 million and I know that I cannot pay it from cash. 
So the 55 million I have refinanced are added to this, so I had exactly 56 million. So Claris is doing good. 130 million of factory construction in last month. Holy. But yeah, our lineup is much stronger. I will wait for one more month to get the real numbers and then work on the Bidley facelift. And our company valuation is back up again. Okay. <laughs> I think we're back in the game. Um, research, marketing, yeah, needs a nice upgrade and the Windley as well. So let's go and aim for about 30 million of R&D cost. Of course I'm wasting money with splitting all my R&D in different areas, but yeah, that's just how I do it. So actual research is 6.6 .6 million, lab costs 11. This is a good setup now, a bit more in, in driver assist as well, because that's the expensive stuff. And marketing, we spent currently around 15 million. Um, yeah, what I also want to do is go a bit into um, off-road, because I want to start with an SUV next episode. So this is now almost doubled our marketing cost. Don't know if it's too much, but I'll do it anyway. Numbers are still looking good and I will now update the Windley. And what we could do with it is not only make it an Eco V12, but make it an Eco V12 Turbo. I think that would be quite good for marketing purposes. So we will replace our variant and slap a turbo on it and it breaks of course. <laughs> Quad Eco Turbo V12? I don't think so, but maybe two. Twin Turbo. Low boost. Oh, we also have twin scroll now. Let's try to get it spooling. Still don't see anything. Okay, now we're getting there. We definitely need to get it to spool earlier. Yeah, the twin scroll helps. It's also a lot more expensive. Still, we, we have a lot of search issues and I cannot spend a lot more money on quality. Ah, I should maybe also get away from carbs. And from race intake, maybe? <laughs> yeah, that's already looking a bit healthier. Still surging. Yeah, now the reliability is back, but I want to get it to spool a bit earlier. Alright, smaller exducer, larger inducer helps. Look at that. Look at that. Almost 80 horsepower and very nice torque curve. I think we're doing pretty well with this one. Might be a bit on the expensive side, especially on the material costs, but yeah, nothing comes for cheap here. It's too good. A diff is also something we would like. Maybe a geared one. And that's what we know at least. A look at the fuel consumption, it's already down to 6.2. Brakes are still decent, I also can stick with the drums. And yeah, new entertainment package. ABS, yes, no. No, not for our entry level. Safety upgrade is probably too expensive for a facelift. I think we're there with this one. And 
because we have changed so much I will delete the old blue plus 2 plus 2 model and just add it new body age penalties are kicking in so the Vinli also needs a successor at some point this one is bottoming out a bit alright yeah quick update two years engine will probably take longer yeah ouch suboptimal so we can also make the car more efficient then okay for an engine a bit too much and let's bring the car to 44 months yeah, at least we can learn. Yeah, we are still in the nice range here. Hey, and now the 2 plus 2 model is more expensive. Because I set it to fun and not to um, uh, city as a target demographic. And no loan this time. So the factory will be quite expensive uh, because I put a lot more tooling into the engine factory. The Vinli will have to run a bit longer then, now with this nice upgrade. But definitely we should have it on the list to be updated at some point. Also the Bramble needs one. It's getting late. Alright, so let's go until 1984 I would say. And then call it a day. Oh yeah, the Winley has dropped in desirability. That costs us big time right now. Or is it this? Why is it so? Why do we have problems now? What's going on? Definitely the Bramble. Or no, Godwit has fallen down. We don't deliver any Godwits anymore. That's because of our replacement of some engine factory. And I shouldn't have done that because the, God the next generation Godwit still takes a lot of time. So let's see if we can produce that engine again. Yeah, the mistake I made was <laughs> the F1 engine, I couldn't align it with the Godwit release. I had to get it out earlier because the F1 project needs to be on time and the series production engine is already tooling the factory right now. So even if the car is only being produced far far down the line, it's already building the factory. So what I should have done is to basically not yet schedule it in the engine factory but rather do it half a year before the Godred release um, so that only then the engine factory is being turned down. So in the meantime, I will just uh, use one of my contracts to get the Godwit back on track. It will be heavily overworked, but I can add another contract. It's very expensive. So I'll add another one. Well, the engine actually costs more than the car. <laughs> But at least we're getting rid of our pre-orders again, hopefully. No, not yet. I guess it's also still tooling, yeah. And I need to raise the price of the Godwit a little bit so that it doesn't lose us as much money. Especially as the contract is overworked anyway. This will now also be expensive regarding pre-order change. So the Godwit is losing us 1.5 million per month, but that's fine. I can live with that cost. So now it's 1984, we're back on track. Let's see what changed that we have less expenses. Now, and it's basically loan repayment. Yeah, went down from 24 million to 7 million. So almost all of our loans are already gone. My Godwit engine contracts are still being overworked, but I think that will clear itself out once we get rid of the old pre-orders. 
here for the clearance we still have some pre-orders but those will be cleared once the factory is cleared. Bramble is still doing excellent and I should raise the prices at some point or order them. I think we are already at the limit with the shifts. Windley is being engineered. Clearis is doing well. First generation, excellent profits. Two ultimates per month are also sold. Getting rid of the pre-orders. And the Godwit already is collecting a few pre-orders as well. So, everything is set. Um, next time we will do a update again of our F1 engine. Let's get into the 700 horsepower area. The F1 turbo engines have been running until 1988, so I can get out two more updates if I focus on this release schedule. And then we should be turbo experts by the end of that time. And also in 1984, what I want to start now is to get into the off-road utility sports market. Um, so a utility sport luxury is has a budget of 47k. The market is not very large yet, especially with limited awareness, um, but I think it will grow and also this is a huge segment we are not currently selling into. This is how it looks like as of now, limited to our awareness and this is overall. So now we have a luxury market share of 13 to 20 percent, which is good and just very small numbers everywhere else. But not everybody wants to have the luxury at the cost that it's currently taking. It's their choice. Um, we have good cars and the new Windley has excellent fuel consumption as well. So let's see how we do in the future. Until then, thank you all for watching and see you guys next time. Bye bye.